The world of everyday life is not only taken for granted as reality by the ordinary members of society in the subjectively meaningful conduct of their lives. It is a world that originates in their thoughts and actions and is maintained as real by these. The sociology of knowledge is concerned with the reality between human thought and the social context in which it arises. Society determines the presence, but not the nature, of the ideas. Your social construct. The way we create meaning through social interactions with others. Are you the ordinary man on the street, or are you a philosopher seeking to understand the origin of knowledge? Here is our topic today on Social Construct. What I'm trying to point out is if he is the leader and he likes coffee and he makes coffee the biggest export and you know I don't like coffee maybe I'm allergic or something maybe I just don't like for whatever reason now maybe that might just be not necessarily a good enough idea let's assume that his philosophy is that you have to believe in a certain deity and I don't believe in it you realize that because he's the leader and he's insisting that quite a number of people would want to go that way. It takes individuality to say, mm -hmm. I don't believe in this and I will not. So that our social construct has been formulated again by identities, but do we have the individual power, the will of mind to be able to say, uh, no, I'm going the other way. We have, but socially, there's a lot of factors that mitigate against that. The mass media, mass media, society, herd mentality, true. friends, <laughs> people. Yeah. Yeah. Very true, very true. But what is our power against such? Or do you disagree? No, what, uh, what uh, I just think sorry. is that indiv indiv to be an individual, you know, it has to also be. It has to also be, you know, in line with what is socially acceptable. Because I can say, for instance, I like to walk around naked, I, but I can't. Yeah. <laughs> get out of the streets and walk around naked because it's not socially acceptable. Well, it's an expression of my individuality for me to say I want to walk around naked. But well, why can't I do it? Because whatever expression I have to express has to be in line with whatever is acceptable by society. Okay, now I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. Sorry, because, because if you look at somebody because, like William Wilberforce, yeah, what does the word eccentric? Everyone, no, but where does the word eccentric come from? Because the moment you start doing that, that's why we have words like eccentric because it means that this guy is different from us. I, I that feel these words are even used to put us all in a box. <laughs> So that's why they just box you with no, the one English. It's a box because if you, if there's no box, you won't have eccentric. So why is eccentric? Because you know this guy is expressing himself in a different way. Yeah. So that means there's a way that he should express himself. So the moment you go in public, 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 social construct. If you want to be an individual, you need to be prepared to go into that box. When something like William Wilberforce, when Equiano, when um, Gravel Sharp were fighting for the abolition of, of slave trade, imagine imagine the kind of box they were put in. They were called the abolition. Let's yeah. Let's yeah. Let's yeah. Let's 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 you know. Okay, now my hair. Just look at my hair. This is my natural hair, right? It's not. I don't have weaves on. I don't have anything. Now I'm a lawyer. In, I'm sure if I walk into a on a normal day, you walk into a Nigerian law firm, you cannot see somebody carrying this kind of hair. It's not possible. Because in, fact, in fact, sometimes you know, sometimes when you even have weaves on, they will tell you, oh, you have to pack your hair in a certain way because you know you're a lawyer and all of that. But one time when I started growing my natural hair, I just told myself, I said, okay, you know what? I actually want to grow my natural hair. And the first time I started coming to work with it, my boss would look at me and say, this your hair is rough. I'm like. That's not the way. It's like, why is it like this? I'm like, it's not rough. That's the way my hair grows. So you have to understand it. And it's natural. This is my natural hair. And that's how it is. So, you know, it took like two, three meetings and all that for me to insist and say, I'm going to keep my hair. I'm sorry. And then before I knew it, maybe like um, the next, maybe in three months or four months, I saw a colleague of mine. Yeah, a colleague of mine just came and she just came and I like, yeah, I knew my hair. I was like, you know, now you that know. is. But exactly. you know, it took a lot of fighting for me yeah, to get that, to that yeah, point. But that was your individualism. But those are consequences so of being an individual. But, like, but sometimes, eh, because I could have as well just said, oh, these guys are stressing me. Okay, let me just. You know, let me just have a Then the individual in you will be dead. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, 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 what if, what if, 
Now another example is what if he, my boss is an understanding person? What if he said, okay, it's either this your hair or you lose your job? What will happen? And then he defeated the individual. That's what I'm saying. That sometimes <laughs> even the expression of your individuality has to be in line with certain things. So even if if well, you yours was not the story, the story, the story is like this because he he accepted it, right? What if he said, oh, I can't have you have this hair in my office. I'm paying you. So it's either you have your hair done properly or because I have people in court come to me and tell me that ah, but you do not do your hair. I'm like, what does it mean to do a hair? This is how my yeah. hair is, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. So what if he had said, oh, you know, and if, if he had said, you lose your job. Do, do you, do you, okay. I mean, are, 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 honey, are you advocating for social conditioning? Because you put no, up a no, good debate. No, 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 I'm saying, you know, because I'm like, yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, yeah, cause, yeah, I agree with you. Know, I do, yeah, but I yeah. was growing up in England. I'm like, I see enough girls like this, and I'm like, okay, okay you yeah, have, you have, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, have a problem. Yeah, but you know that a lot of lawyers would, you know, in Nigeria. I would have social have constructs, so, so, yeah, social, yeah, social, exactly. social. Okay, yeah. now, um, reality is said to be socially constructed. Our reality is socially put together. So if we all, as we all agree, that coffee is a good overtime drink. Mm-hmm. If we did this long enough, I could literally just be a leader of a community, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And I'll have those who suffer from heart palpitation, to so probably seizures, mm-hmm. and you know, it's just it becomes a religion. Ah, oh, you should drink coffee. But then, yes, you should actually. That said, at what point do you say the world is going this way, and I'm individual enough to separate their reality from what is? a reality to me because you just realize that in the end you're living remember according to thomas you're living someone else's identity because when you put a leader there whatever he puts in front of you which you follow becomes your truth because if you look at it now if we bring this home to what is going on on social media to what's going on in the news to what is going on everywhere around us is socially structuring restructuring our mentality so that uh, English has a little tweak in here and there, which is cute actually. You say I don't mind the English one, or you say I don't know for gay rights. Uh, no, I mean like, I just had thrown out there. I don't know for it. I don't understand it. It don't make sense to me. Because you're not okay. Good. So when social construct says that this is what you have to do, at what point do you lose who you are to socially fit in? Because Whatever it, what we're talking about today, social construct why do you is need to lose who you are? exactly why do you why do you need to lose who you are now to even that, answer no, that? Let me, let me, let me ask, let me ask the question. Yeah, you, you said it. The pressure, first of all, there's all the factors that make you want to, uh, you know. But then, are you enough? Are you strong enough man? to want to? Um, you know, I think your way is kind of cute, but you know, we don't do cute. We do real. So why do Nigerians actually wear suits? Because you know what? Social I construct. Know, I know, I know, social construct. So He's very social yeah. construct. Very hot. So okay, you know, this is we're living in in, in a totally different <laughs> yeah. climate. Why do we have to? Why is suits? How, why does it have, have to be our in, corporate? In, in fellas' words. <laughs> Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. No, no, no. Like that. yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's that's a very very good point. Because I mean, it's it's because I have to wear one because I, I I can't go to the high court and go and argue a motion. And, exactly. And, and wear my native, although I love to wear my native. That is because that is because we've all we've, we've just adopted that. What are we adopting? What else are we adopting? I mean, can we just name a few things that we're adopting us? Like, oh, we've adopted a lot of everything. Um, religion. 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 religion, religion, religion. You know, even, even, I would even trickle down to even the, the law profession, for instance. One thing I do not understand is why I have to wear that wig mm. and that scalp. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite hot. Like, yeah, it is quite hot. You know, the wig itself is, you know, it's just um, it's indicating. And your hair is dense. I can't imagine your sweating scalp. Ah, like, like, why is the wig white? There was actually a day I went to college. Let's ask questions now. I love that. Yeah, the wig is white just because that's how you know the judges those days that's how they used to have their hair that's how they used to wear their hair that's how they used to wear their hair that's how the english you know lords then used to wear their hair and then we just said oh you know what let's continue with that oh then all of us so they made kind of hair they now started making a replica yeah exactly so why do you have to wear you know particular day i was actually in class i didn't want to you know people always say oh but you always try to prove your points but i wasn't trying to prove a point that day honestly I had forgotten my wig and gown at home and I was going to appear in court. 
I was wearing a black dress. I was like, how am I going to do this? So I went to court and then I announced her parents and they, the judge looked at me and she went, um, sorry, who's, who's there? <laughs> I was like, I'm wearing it. And she's like, I can't see you. I mean, why are you not rogue? And I made a good case and I said, oh, you know, I, I tried to explain to her that I actually forgot my reader now and I just thought that, you know, instead of asking for an adjournment, why don't I come to God because I didn't want to waste time because blah, 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 it was important for justice to be, you know, justice, justice delayed, justice denied. I, and then she was like, okay. Okay, mm-hmm. just appear, mm-hmm. just go ahead. And everybody in court was like, oh wow, she actually allowed you to appear. Yeah, with history. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It was down to her discretion. Yeah, it was down to her discretion. Yeah, she just like, agreed that, okay, fine. Let I think I'll say about that. But then she made a good case as well. I was going to give her that actually. In my profession. You're right with the high, you're just never going to get it. Everybody seems to put on what coats. Yeah. Like a lab coat. Yeah. And then. If you look at it critically, there's a chance that you would spread infection when you're putting on that work coat than when you're just dressed. Like if I'm going on the ward round and I don't put on a I don't put really? on a tie, like I, I roll up my sleeves, yeah. you understand? Like I don't want anything that will just start to yeah. you understand okay. because anything okay, yeah, away. Yeah. That is how I do my things. But then I'm at work I'm uh, in charge of quality control, and then everybody is conforming to the white robe, white robe, white robe, white robe, and I'm there, no tie. Why is this such a rebel? And I'm like, this is the right way to do things. Research has actually shown that you transmit more infection yeah. by putting on all that. If it was disposable and each time I see a patient, I remove it and I throw it in the vein. Yeah, yeah, fine. If we can afford that, yeah. perfect. I don't mind. I'll put that on. But okay. Now look at the real system. The typical doctor leaves that wardrobe at work. Do you understand? So just fancy. No, he leaves it at work. So the next day, the next day, just comes and carries it. That's the infection from yesterday. perception or interpretation to a matter mm-hmm. is more fashion to everybody let's go yeah. everybody follow yeah because we, yeah, so I mean, we don't live in isolation we live in the society yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, think, I think i think i think it's i think it's a paradox yes we don't live in isolation yeah As an exactly. individual, it's difficult for her to express her individualism or she thinks she's less of a of person. Course, so of she course, has to rather just put it no, back but, but, but this is what we're saying. Remember that we're talking about course. social construct. Yeah. Of course. It's supposed to be easier for you to go on with comfort, you know, to be conformed to whatever norms, doctrines that you have going around. Of course it's supposed to be easier. And I guess it's also easy for you to think for yourself. It's just that, you know, at some point thinking becomes hard. Yeah, it is. Because it requires rationale, it requires some level of know how, that requires common sense. I mean, common sense has just this case, so been going out of fashion. If, <laughs> if you cannot really, as a person, determine your morals, then we're lost. Like, we're lost. But, 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 but how do you determine morals? Where do morals come from? Because this is this is something that we definitely discuss in law school every year. Yeah. yeah. Well, where do morals come from? Social groups. I, yeah, but I say morals come from religion first. Very true. Well, uh, say that's it's because it's most social groups, social groups most social groups have yeah, as well morals that to religion. No, okay. I, I, if if, if, if no, it's because of religion, we won't say we won't say thou shall not lie. You know, no, those, 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 those Ten Commandments from the first basis. Okay, can I but say then, that? Yeah, Sorry, but then when a soldier kills, we say it's okay. If you say thou shalt not kill, then the state should be killed. Thou shalt not kill, kill, but you can kill in the name of I think, I think the I think morals coming from religion isn't 
or well partly correct and then another addition to that I would say is communities because if you define community for example people who share the same beliefs your yeah. same values the same ideology okay. we're, we're so right. that for example in some places you know they have the whole thing of don't eat meat don't tell them eat meat you know they have you can't eat fish on this I remember a friend of mine who is um, Catholic came to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I know. Yeah, you yeah. see, well, I mean, I probably sure. get yeah. served. Well, I'll eat. If it doesn't have germs, I mean, yeah. I mean just enough germs, yeah. too. You know, I could deal with a little bit of <laughs> Like, I'll eat meat. But then I had a friend who came to my house, and she the fasting periods for the Catholics, and she said, you know, we're fasting right now, and I'd like to tell you not to eat fish. I'm like, honey, fish? why? Yeah. What kind of it? No, because no, you like there was a certain, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but you, you know, but you give up. Yeah, the Catholic, right? But well, you give up. Am I that you that you that you what I understand that you choose to give up. So different different yes, things yes, fast. So yeah, different yeah, different some people you might have given up chocolate. Some people fast on Twitter. Okay. Say, maybe maybe I've spoken about fish long enough around her for her to think you're into fish, honey. So now we're fasting. Give up fish. That's why I asked her why, and she said. You know, we're fasting, you have to give up something, and you know, I just came to tell you fish. I'm like, honey, don't think this. I don't go with that whole general mentality of give up something. If I want to give up something based on my own personal conviction, I would. And every night, like, personally, I fast on Mondays. I just try to stay away from food, yeah, personally. But I don't move with that whole crowd mentality. Let's give up. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that, honey, don't come to me and say give up fish. I won't. I might just even deliberately so go out of my way to buy fish. But that's your individualism as well. That's yeah. the thing. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's the right. thing. So at what point do we begin to question even our religious doctrines? Like, why do we have these things? Okay. I'm not saying okay. go that's against it. I read my dad's memoirs and I was like, wow. The jokes, the way he, was he was a rebel. No, he was in the army. Oh, oh. He was a rebel, like he was anti -sabi. He, I mean, he lost his religion a long time ago. Yeah. He never went to charge drugs. Is this the Yes. Okay. Well, and... <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I know. Like, you can come and meet him. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. I was like, man, that this is me. And he was writing about things that happened 40 years ago. And, so I, you pass, you get a lot from I think, genes. I think everything is bounded by your genes. Genes experience. Like, okay, you are the doctor. I, I think I, I might sound not very, very, I can sound very rational, yeah. but I have this, should I say, hypothesis that if I were to do a functional MRI, which is practically, I'm looking at the brain of the fetus yeah. in utero. And I'm targeting the, the hypothalamus where memories uh, and uh, speaking English. Yes, yeah. so <laughs> like I'm targeting the part of the brain where memories are coded. Yeah. yeah, and I can for sure say while that baby was in there, he's making memories, yeah. and that just practically means that everything we are. Is, a, is, is practically an expression of our genes because now your genes determine your personality, they determine, and your personality determines your reaction to so your environment. Sense. Now, your environment is practically everything else. Yes, so, let me, let me ask you something. I just, because this is still the genes mm. um, argument. I'm not a doctor, but I, you know. So, now there's this thing I do. There's this thing I do. I take my hair on this side and I just twist it and roll and twist and twist and twist. Now, when I went, to the, I went to the village and I, I was talking to my my grandmother saw me and then she just saw me twisting and twisting my hair. She was like, "But well, your mother used to do this thing." And then I was always beating her, "Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it!" Now my grandmother does not twist her hair. My mother did, and then I started twisting my hair. So I'm saying that even if it's a gene, is it possible that at some point, you know, because I have acquired certain genes, certain characteristics, they are not imprinted in my genes that I did not inherit. I would now pass on. Those characteristics to my kids. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just if, wondering. If your kids, if your kids probably didn't see you twisting your hair, then the chances that they would twist their hair would be low. Yeah. 
despite the fact because that the they thing, have I genetic not, tendency I didn't grow up with my mom. Better. That's the thing. I didn't grow up with my mom. But you must have seen your mom mm-hmm. at some point twisting her head. Yeah, but I didn't experience my dad's memories and it's his way of life. Jane. But, but I... You, are, I you, you, understand this, yeah. you understand? So uh, what we're saying is the environment has the tendency to bring out the genetic expression. Yeah. Or rather, limit or oh, say yeah, how, how much expression okay. yeah okay. Cause so like you you say you say um, you say um, how tall can you grow now you grow as tall as you want to grow if we, if we actually want to think about it technically your genes are there your dad is short your, your mom is short but that just gives a, a bracket to how tall you can really grow now, it doesn't if, mean you're not going to be tall. It doesn't mean you're not going to be tall. Really? Now, if, if, if you were always dreaming about being tall and you saw yourself as a tall guy, the likelihood that you're going to be very tall yeah. is there. But if you never get what to it, and, and then, then my you're short anyway. Yeah, yeah, the so short so short you're, doctor, what you're saying here is thoughts become things. Th- thoughts really become things. Wow. That, that's the way because I say it. Wow. I, I, that's I say it. And the only way I can prove it is to actually just check and see that that baby in utero is coding memory. Now that those memories could be associated to what it can feel from the environment. Now babies hear the music, they hear yeah, everything. So they feel the emotions of the mother, the hormones and stuff like that. So if Fantastic. she's if she's going through stress, now that child would be coding memories of stress. Yeah. And probably those memories and the thoughts that the child might be having would be Okay, I'm going to experience stress in life, and that the likelihood that that child would actually be born into a scenario. You know what I'm saying? It's just. Rain. I was wondering if anybody who is in the society can understand that they have the power innate ability, the dominion, gosh, you have it in you to be ruler over your circumstances. Do you agree? Yeah, we all have free will. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you just echoed it like, we all have free will, like that's something that's easy to use. Well, we we're talking about social constructs. Yes, yes. The, 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 the social, um, should I say, cage we live in. No man is an idea. Yes, as restricted. Wait, can we, can we mathematically solve that when you say, no man is an island. I agree. I don't agree because I think that Napoleon was Yeah. Man. You can. Because that's yeah. not an island. I'm 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 not any kind of change, yeah? For you to even create any kind of social construct, society needs to be with you. Yeah. I'm thinking that, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that if society shuts you down. I'm not thinking that my decision. Yeah, that's why I was saying that. You know what? If you're going to think about something, your thinking is only limited to what you're exposed to and what you've experienced. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, and what you know. Wait, so, wait. Society. Can society shut you down? Society, society shuts you down. Yeah, it shuts you down. Society shut the Catholic Church down for so long. It, it, you know, there was no proof that the same thing positive about being gay until Pope yeah. Francis came in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the society shut that down for so long. It was as if it was as if if you said anything like that, you were going against the laws of God. Something of ourselves that I'm hoping we can just point out which is that part of us that why i think education affords we you lose the, the why I every think, time i think education affords you the opportunity to think why to think why yeah it, it's not less it's not like 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 Whenever I'm writing exams, I'm like, well, it can be this way. So I just start writing now. Right? Like, yeah. And you ask your, like, your answer like, sheet. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, why are you? And I'm like, 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 I'm
way, you know, it shows that you're thinking. But yeah, I was thinking like that. But you know what happened? Like you know what happened? Yeah, but you know what happened? At some point, actually, yeah, 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 but at some point, but at some point, I still finished top of my class. Do you know how it happened? I just said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to bother myself. Okay. So basically, everything that in the book, I did very good at the time. Yes, I cram everything in the book, and I finished top of my class. And I was like, okay, yes, now we're talking. But I did, I did, I was not thinking. I shut down for like three years, like. Oh, sure. You so this is what the society does. So society says no, so. because, because we move, move from community to society, and I thought society just shuts you down, don't they? Yeah. But the white yeah. question, the white question, right. education and rights education, I think philosophy should be made compulsory. So at least you can think. So, but, not, but, not everybody, but not everybody is a fan of philosophy. No, but he helps you no, 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 no. rationalize, he helps you think in your you, you don't have to How be a fan, but wait, no, you don't have to be a fan. You just need yeah. that exposure. You, you need the exposure. Because okay, I did so I, 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 I I sociology at A level and, uh, and, and I hated it. And it's, 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 it's funny, yeah, I, I did sociology. For the first, see the first two months, I probably couldn't figure it out. I was like, what is this all about? Why do I need to learn about Marx? And why do I need to learn about this? But, it's funny because now in practice, you know, I, I practice mainly property law and I always tend to go back to why is the law like this? Because believe it or not, land has a lot to do with philosophy. It's like, okay, this is the thinking, this is the thinking, you know. So I'm like, okay, now I can see the benefits. I wish I concentrated more on it. But I'm very sure there are a lot of people that are like, why do I need to? So what is what we're saying? I feel like information, education, as we're saying, which you said is very important that everybody gets has also been streamlined to a point where only a select few privileged people are open to it, so that they're less thinking people and more following people. Our social media, from the news to the internet, is fashion, it's, it's a web that's kind of social media. I think it goes beyond social media, it's like practically... So that you don't know anything outside what you're told. Before I go to that, um, let me just read this. Um, this is Elliot Freighton, 1970, from the book uh, Professional Medicine. It says, when a physician diagnoses a uh, human condition as illness, he changes the man's behavior by diagnosis. So that's a social state Just is from added to the physical state by assigning the meaning of illness to the disease. Now, oh. it's, it's, it's in this particular sense that the physician creates the illness. So it's basically what I'm saying is, um, someone comes to me and says, I have a cold, my head hurts, uh, my back is paining oh me, and then I, I just put all that together and think, hmm, this yeah, must be a virus. And I give it, and then you know, I tell him, this is the flu, and then he goes knowing that he has a flu. At the exception, you understand? Like it might not be a flu; it might just be stress. Yes. Yes. It might just, you understand? It might be anything. But he goes. This is why. And yeah, you know, I really do consider people who do not believe in the divine. But this is why in Christianity, for example, they tell you it's faith, not what you see. So again, you are told to, even though you are here, not be here. You're told to transcend what you see, what you hear, so that our captivity begins with what we see yeah, and what we hear. has its limits. Faith has no limits. It has. It has. I think. I think that's where the. It has limits that you put on. Yeah. How many people have limits? How many people have limits? The same way reality is self-defined. That's what we're saying. If you have faith, you have limits. That's what we're saying. Would you approach it? Change your genotype. Yeah. I think that's. No, it's figurative. Or would you approach faith? Change your genotype because I've heard. No, genotype. Let me give you. Let me give you. I've seen somebody. I've seen somebody. You know. I saw somebody. I've seen somebody who was SS and you know was constantly being ill and after a while he just went through prayers and I cannot say for the change in genes but I can tell for the end to being sick. That said,
declare, be curious. <laughs>